Alrighty. I'm live. Okay, I'm live. A little late, but I'm live. Howdy, howdy, howdy. Uh-oh. Am I stopped? Hi. I'm putting this in the chat. Because I just learned I can receive stars now. Okay. So I'm going to put it in there. And I got to adjust this light. Oh, my word. Let's look it. We're going to make sure this is better next time. Alrighty. Great afternoon. I am going to go ahead and start lunch and learn actually no wrong wrong day <laughs> this is lunch lessons lunch lessons with Sean and if you will be watching this on YouTube later I'm Sean Quetta Cunningham and uh, I know that God has gifted me with a purpose to use my voice to share advice um, wisdom that I am learning uh, and receiving and want to share especially to women uh, but I know that a lot of the messages can serve both male and female so with that I want to share with you something that I shared with the ladies of um, the Thrive Tribe and uh, in the post, no, I'm sorry, not a post, but uh, in the newsletter on yesterday. And so while I am doing that, let me also share this about the conviction of dropping the ball on things that God has given me. And during the pandemic, God gave me um, the Thrive Tribe. Uh, and uh, I I tried the ball a bit. I'll just be very honest. Now, I was led to how I was leading the Thrive Tribe wasn't the way of how I, I needed to pivot, but still the mission was to share and um, share things with women uh, and to be that motivational big sister, little sister, sister, however, um, in our walks of life. And with women, we our roles are not separated. It's the great blend. And of course with men too, but it's a great men that at the same time that we are business owners and professionals and mothers and wives and uh, fiancés and um, aunts and you know, we're all these great things. And so how do we thrive in all the spaces that God has called us to be. And so I just stopped doing that. And again, there was a conviction, but there was a grace in there too, because God reminded me. And I was also reminded again, like this is the third time of just how the lack of consistency is in essence, disobedience to purpose. And so here I am back on it. Um, and I'll be presenting to you lunch lessons with Sean going, um, oh, see if I say something, I have to commit myself to it. Uh, but right now we're going to, we're going to start on Tuesdays and I am going to develop that more. I just wanted to say, Hey, there's something that I'm supposed to do with going live and to share this word. And so here I am. So all that to say, if you are a woman and you want to, and you desire, and you know that God has called you to lead a thriving life in faith, 
family and purpose, then please subscribe to the Thrive Tribe news, newsletter so that you can um, receive the information and all things that I share. Uh, and then also share with other women. It is free. Um, just no gimmicks or anything. I like to talk. I like to inspire and bam, you get in the form of a newsletter. But the purpose for you being here today so that I can wrap up and that you can still enjoy your lunch break, lunch lessons with Sean, I want to talk about the crowd is never right. So yesterday I shared uh, with the Thrive Tribe, it's a lesson that actually I received from my pastor and he always says this, he's been saying it for years and it's been the last couple of months for sure, maybe up to a year, that you know you get it. But I shared with the Thrive Chapel in the newsletter about if we recall the story of Jesus and Barabbas, how the crowd was willing and wanting to redeem um, a sinner over the Savior. And you'll think that because everyone else is saying something and everyone else is telling you what to do, then that actually means that they are right and justified. We're living in a time today to where the crowd uh, is leading with uh, convictions, and I don't know if that's the right word. Maybe they're leading with thoughts against our convictions, let me say that, and our as in um, women of God and children of God that the crowd is ushering in um, certain <laughs> certain beliefs and certain ways of doing things and, and trying to disguise it in the form of progressive, um, being progressive thinking when it's actually going against the construct of family of what it is God has called us to do. And so we can even move that from a, a big frame point into just our everyday life, our everyday lives. And I shared with uh, the Thrive Tribe on yesterday that the crowd will have you going vegan without context. <laughs> and I love certain influencers and different things, but y'all will pick up trends and habits that are not even relevant or necessary for our own lives. It will have you thinking that you need to uh, follow a blueprint of certain celebrities and different things because if they're doing it, that it, if it works for them, then it must work for you, right? Um, which is not the case. And so what we have to do is stand firm, one, in knowing who we are and whose we are. And let me take a quick pause right quick because one of the things I share with the Thrive Tribe ladies is that if you are on and you like this post and you share it, um, Taylor will be watching. Y'all know now I have a whole senior at home. Uh, that's a whole nother, that's a whole nother live, right? Uh, transitioning seasons of motherhood. But she will be watching to enter your name into a drawing and I'm going to buy you lunch. Now, it may not be Chick-fil-A, it's $10. You may can get two four for fours, right? So, but <laughs> in essence, if you like this video and you share it, uh, we will enter your name and message you for your cash app and bam ten dollars lunch is on me so anyways going back to the lesson the crowd is never right what we have to stand firm is in is that and i'm guilty of it so i can speak on it that the crowd will pump you up to do things that we often may not be ready to do that we shouldn't do or that we will do out of season the crowd will have us believing that people who constantly like and comment on our post or are our day ones or they treat us better than family. I regret when I read people's posts and say, and they'll say things like, you know, um, the family members scroll past my posts and stuff and I got people who don't even know me, like and love my stuff. Well, you know, sometimes we need to put that in context because <laughs> some people are nosy. Some people may spend too much time on social media and therefore you're in their algorithm and so everything that you post, they get to see. It doesn't mean that they are the most supportive of you. Uh, because I always say you can check the crowd when you get in a crisis. You can check, check the crowd when, it's, uh, when you're going through shifting seasons and who will be there with you. 
You can check the crowd when they actually have to give more than lip service, when they actually have to give you their time, their talents, and their treasures to help you or help your family if you're sick and you're needing something. You'll be able to check the crowd then. And that's how you'll really decipher if the crowd is right. But most importantly, as women um, in our various spaces, you know, it's so easy to now duplicate because you want to duplicate what you think is quicker paths to success. And what I'm learning and what I know to be true and what I'm a living witness of and the evidence of is that the greatest playbook to success, and this is a cheat code. So if y'all are writing things down, I want you to come in, turn off all the devices and other things. If you got stuff going on in the background, people talking like, hush y'all, she's about to give the cheat code. So here is a cheat code to exponential success. Being obedient to God's purpose and plan for your life. I wish I had some music because child, I dropped some music and some drums. That's the cheat code. <laughs> Being obedient, doing things in the timeliness and in the order and fashion to which God has for you. I can do a lot of things and still having to take inventory of the things that I should not do. But I've submitted myself to following the word of God to following and being a disciple, a true disciple of furthering the kingdom and the mission of Jesus Christ and to use my life to be the evidence of what that looks like. And we, yes, there are things and books and principles that work, right? You know, for that will aid us and that God has given us that is supplemental to his word. But People literally will ask, what's, how did you get to this level? Or what's the cheat code? And it really is the submission of your life. And again, the crowd is never right because people will see this message. I literally have been told that uh, people stop coming to things that I host um, because it's, it's too churchy. That is, it sounds too much, you know, like I'm going here a sermon. Well, <laughs> and then as I look back over the things that are happening in my life and mm, that's not, that don't even need to be said. So I will always yield myself as a vessel and know that I cannot take any credit. I'm not going to. Um, I can't offer any other credit. There are people that will that God will allow to bring into my life. I have mentors. I have great parents. Um, I have um, I have great friends. I have destiny partners um, and helpers that God brings into my life, and that He allows to be used to be a blessing to me, and I in turn to them um, or to other people. But it all starts from the essence of God. And I'm not going to get on here and ever persuade you or lead you that it doesn't start with the foundation of God. And that, yes, you have to be practical, right, in doing those things. Like you're running a business, you have to be practical and that you actually have to do the work of the business. And you actually have to sit down and have meetings and strategy meetings and have a plan yes you're going to have to do the practical living right and so those things are right that the crowd says and that people say you should do but what what often is missing from the crowd is that you have to have a solid foundation and that solid foundation for me is knowing that God is the source, that God is the substance, that God is a sustainer, that he has the ultimate success plan for my life, and that alignment and consistency is the key. Going back earlier to what I shared with you, that's where I've lacked at, the consistency. God 
literally gives me brilliant ideas that the things that he has allowed me to do thus far in my life are history making barrier breaking creative ideas that I don't have to replicate or duplicate anything he allows me to be a starter right here in my community but even with that there's always work to do. There's always um, there's always some cleanup that needs to happen, and that's for the space I'm in. That I literally have to have had to and have I done to ask for forgiveness for not being consistent with the things that God has shared with me, right? And that may be you on today because you're following the crowd, you're doing things that people say you should do, people will try to rush your vision. And it may be the thing that God has for you, but then you will rush and do it out of season. There are people that want me to start things and do things right now. And I listen and I hear it as confirmation, but it's not the time. And I know what that space is trying to do things that please people because I am the person that I'm not a people pleaser, I'm a purpose pusher. And so not being a people pleaser, but a purpose pusher is that I do want, if I know that what I do can bless you, I want to add you in. I want you to come along with me. I'm, I'm, I, I know that I'm guilty of that. Like we can build together. I'm always trying to do things to where there's a collaborative effort. But I've even had to recognize that some people are not ready. And it may not be the timing. I'm having to realize that myself. But if you're on here today and you do feel like you're being rushed, just stop. You have a lot of great things to do. I want them to be spread out over my life because I want to live a long life. If you're wanting to do everything by the time you're 40, then what's, what's the use of you making it to 41, right? <laughs> And I'm like, so Lord, you can stretch my purpose, <laughs> stretch it to where it extends to see my grandchildren and great grandchildren, even great great grandchildren. Like, so you can extend it. I'm learning that, but I've had to learn that, and that has been learned in communication with mentors, spiritual advisors, and so I just want to share that with you today. Don't follow the crowd. Don't try to look to the left or to, or to the right of what this person is doing. Because then you feel like you have to do it. Don't follow the crowd of what everyone is saying is acceptable. Because then you feel like you have to become it. Don't follow the crowd and listen to what people um, say is the right thing to do. Because right and righteousness, according, according to, I'm sorry, with culture, is not the same. There's a right way to do things. There's a righteous way to do things. And ultimately righteousness trump what we think is right because that's what the word tells us, right? There is a way that man, what we think is right. But if it goes against the will, against righteousness, then for us as kingdom believers, it's not right. So don't follow the crowd. You're eating meat and you're in good shape. Um, you may have to make some adjustments and choices. And there are some days where I just don't feel like eating meat and I will just binge on salads and smoothies. You know, I, I'm that person too, right? I probably eat meat once a day. But I'm not going to go vegan out of context. Because Jesus said it's not what goes into a man that defiles him. It's what it was in your mouth. It's what comes out of it. Okay. Right? I'm just I'm just saying. Like, and I'm not saying if you're a vegan and that's what you're there, your path and you have that own consciousness and you know your why, that's fine. You know, that's what I'm saying. Because child, don't take me out of context. <laughs> but again, don't follow what the crowd is doing if it's not relevant to your own life. All right, that was just an example to give because 
everybody want to be Auntie Tab. And I love her, but you know, you don't even know her why. So, anywho, I'm done. Well, all that being said, if you, Taylor is, uh, Taylor, are you checking? Oh, thank you, honey bun, to see who shared it. You gonna put it in the hat so we can draw the name. And we can end the video. Um, I thank you. Taylor is going to see who shared it. We're at the 20 minute mark. And so that means my time is up. But thank you so much. Again, if you want to listen um, to more videos, I do have a YouTube channel under my name to follow with uh, also sharing about life lessons, but business lessons, nonprofit uh, lessons under Shanquetta Cunningham. Would love for you to subscribe and share and listen to those videos as well. You all can send stars to me now. Y'all listen, child, I'm a whole creator as according to Facebook. And so I can start receiving stars. And I think that means you can start like, uh, if you send stars, it means you're actually like sending money to me. I found it out today. Come on, y'all. Whatever that means, but go ahead. I followed the steps, I registered so I can start receiving stars. <laughs> But I just thank God. I look at everything as a blessing. Like it says I'm a content creator, a rising content creator. Okay, that works. Alrighty, I was just trying to talk into Taylor. You let me know, baby girl. Who's the winner? Oh, people we just watching. So that's the directions. Yeah, I had to share the video. Taylor said no one shared it yet. So guess it's ten dollars on her. Well. I will wait about five minutes and we'll see if you are the winner. We will comment it under this video. If you have liked and shared this video, that's the rules to receive the $10 for your lunch. And uh, um, but other than that, thank you all for joining on Lunch Lessons with Shun. Subscribe. Also, I'm not a subscriber. But yeah, subscribe to the newsletter and that's, that is above. I will pin this comment. As well, last announcement, next Thursday on the 18th, please join me with two amazing women. Um, you all know, know this is May. This is the month of Mother's Day and celebration. I'm not having anything this week because this, for me, my concentration um, for the week is my baby girl. We have our eldest that's graduating. Oh, let me say my eldest who's graduating number three in her class for ride to an HBCU plus a whole nother six figure scholarship, which we will announce this week. Y'all tell the Lord, thank you. <laughs> okay. Not just been, um, what's the word I'm looking for? This is what she's been awarded. Not just, um, recognized for tell the lord thank you but this is her week so next week we will have videos um and we're going to have two amazing mothers and the topic is going to be mothering a special child with special needs uh and we will have miss natasha davis and miss Charisse um smith who will be on to talk about um their journeys of motherhood and uh in dealing with their children and raising their children, uh, excuse me, and all of the care and concern that comes with it when you receive a diagnosis with your child and how that mothering looks. I'm so excited for this wonderful conversation. It will be here on Facebook Live at 7 p.m. next um, Thursday. And then the week after that, we will also have a conversation about motherhood and miscarriages. Uh, are we still considered mothers once we've miscarried? Is there um, conviction of mourning your miscarriage and you have other children? These tough conversations of motherhood that we do not talk about enough, that's our focus for the month. And so it will be post Mother's Day, but still relevant because again, I'm in celebration mode and a little sadness, but you know, all the emotions of motherhood with our firstborn graduating. All right. Well, thank you all so much. 
I pray you have a blessed and amazing Wednesday. And uh, no, Tuesday. I'm getting my days confused because I be on tomorrow for nonprofit stuff. I'm working it out though. But all right, don't follow the crowd. Till next time. Bye bye.